Nancy Maxine is at it again because she never stopped. Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California was honored recently at the Glamour's Women of the Year Award Show. You didn't get an invite. And at that event, she decided to whip the crowd into a demagogic frenzy. Here's a selection. For those who say to me, you are asking for something too soon and too early. Be careful. Don't jeopardize yourself. Don't say what you're saying right now, but I continue to say, impeach him. Yeah. Impeach 45. Yeah. Impeach 45. Yeah. I didn't hear you impeach 45. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, the ruling class loves it. Not surprised, though. Statements like this fit into a long pattern for Maxine Waters, from cheering on race riots in Los Angeles 25 years ago to praising the Fidel Castro regime in Cuba. We've got some recent highlights from Maxine Waters. Here are a few. Certainly the inauguration is a way of welcoming in someone to the presidency and honoring them and respecting them. I don't honor him, I don't respect him, and I don't want to be involved with it. I'm questioning the patriotism of all of those Republicans who are allowing this president to side with Putin. I think that Jeff Sessions is very dangerous. I think he's a racist. This is a bunch of scumbags. That's what they are. Mark Stein is a writer and a columnist and a connoisseur of this kind of stuff, and he joins us tonight. Mark, it's great to see you in the studio. Hey, good good to be with you, and congratulations on the start of your second year. Well, thank you very much. So you're in Washington, D.C., now the most Democratic city in America. That's right. I think it was 91% for Hillary. I know a lot of the Democrats. Some of them are kind of smart and impressive, and some of them are good people. Maxine Waters is the least impressive by far, the most corrupt, the no. least knowledgeable, no. the most extreme, the shallowest. No. How did she wind up the folk hero? Yeah, I don't get that because, as you say, she's one of those. Uh, I mean, obviously, a Democratic Party politics is not yet quite as lucrative as it is, say, in Zimbabwe. Uh, but she is one of those people who's in, been in full time public service and has managed to do very nicely out of it. I'm not sure what other people get out of it. I mean, she's shouting, Impeach 45. Okay, you have to be a congressman to file articles of impeachment. That's you. Uh, we can't. Do it. We can sing along, but we can't actually do it. So go ahead, punk, make my day. So what, what scares me, though, is if Republicans on the Hill continue to not deliver anything, right. I think it's possible they lose. In fact, it may be likely that they lose control yes. of the House, at which point they've said they're going to impeach the president. They probably will. So then you have Democrats in control. Does it worry you that these are not reasonable people. This is a group that considers Maxine Waters a hero. Yeah, no, I think that's actually serious. And I think at some point people have to actually, you know, call their bluff. Because the, the other guy, uh, the guy uh, Al Green, uh, is uh, threatening impeachment before, to file articles of impeachment before Christmas. I think somebody else has said they're going to do it before Thanksgiving. I don't know that there's a public holiday between now and Thanksgiving, <laughs> but <laughs> if, uh, if they're there is, if there's uh, St. Ethelred, the incontinence holiday coming up between now and then, someone will fight. Go ahead. Well, they actually Go did ahead. it today, I Go believe. Ahead. Really? Members actually... of the House, that's exactly right. right. Put forward articles of impeachment. I mean, it's toothless. But I just wonder how many people in the resistance have thought through what does it mean if these people take control? Even if you don't like Trump, you really want to put Maxine Waters in control of something? Well, no, I, I, exactly. And the, po and the point here is that you know, you can only push things to extremes so far before uh, it's a 50-50 nation, give or take, and, and a tiny number of people in a handful of states decide national elections and who controls the White House and who controls the legislature. And so if you push politics to the extreme at both ends, you actually make politics impossible. You make, you, you make it impossible to have a functioning legislature. And you you, and you put yourself in a situation, as we see, where uh, tiny little things like uh, one Senate seat or a couple of House seats actually render government totally non-functioning. And the dysfunctionalism of the political process is what led to Trump. So go ahead and make it more dysfunctional. See where it gets you. But you just think, oh, so if your critique of Trump, if your complaint with Trump is he's emotionally incontinent, mm. he's irresponsible, he tweets too much, he doesn't behave yeah. in a dignified way, and they're always saying that. I get it. 
then why wouldn't your response be to be the responsible person? Right, right. But they're doing the opposite. Right, exactly. I mean, the thing, but the thing about it is they're not actually, tweeting isn't grounds for impeachment. There's no uh, tweeting amendment to the United States Constitution saying that tweeting, you'd have to pass a tweeting amendment. She'd have to get two thirds of the state to sign on to the tweeting amendment. And there might be grounds for a tweeting amendment. It might be a great cause to say that if you run for national office, you have to give up your Twitter feed. It might be something Maxine could get on board with. But that, she, but that things stand. The fact that she's good at chance doesn't lead to the end of the Trump presidency. Do you find it odd that the leadership of the Democratic Party, the party of mm. the young, mm. is elderly, to put it mildly? I mean, Joe Biden is now saying, you know, he's deeply considering running for president, mm. okay, which would be hilarious for him to do it again. He ran 30 right. years ago, as right. you remember, in 88. He, upon inauguration, if he were to be elected, would be older than Reagan was right. when he retired after two terms. How ironic that the young party is so old. Why is that? You're looking at it the wrong way, Tucker. I mentioned Zimbabwe a moment ago. Robert Mugabe is 93. Yes. And they only put him under house arrest today. So if you're Biden or Bernie or Hillary or Nancy Pelosi or Elizabeth Warren, you're thinking, well, Look at old Bob over in Harare. I've got another two decades before they put me under house arrest. Uh, as far as they look at it. So by the Mugabe standard, yeah. they're just getting started. Yeah, uh, uh, that's, that, that's right. And actually, I think, I mean, looking at taking this seriously, Bernie Sanders was a, is an old crazy guy, but he was a romance for the young. Uh, and the problem for me with these people is not that they're, you know, one of the, one of the things that makes politics dysfunctional, particularly in Washington is that everyone is mired in 1930s social programs that are actually irrelevant to every social indicator of the early 21st century. Uh, well, who are the people likely to be most attached to those 1930s social programs? People who were, uh, you know, in kindergarten when they were still no, fresh. That's, that's totally, that is, that is a deep point. I wish we had more time to explore it. Thank you, Mark Stein. Thanks, Thanks to see you. Stay in Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may, I may move in here.